Why what should the university be steps? obligated to provide food to people who have taken over a building? You should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? But they, they, water they did problems? put themselves in that very deliberately. No problem, sir. You said you had a problem, you're right? You do, Bro, I'm an African American. You are a white man telling me to leave a part of the campus. You want me to go to Jasmine Rush and show her a photo of you? You just spilled my drink. You just spilled my drink and you're blocking you're blocking my child stroller from moving forward. That's a little weird, bro. You're acting a little weird, bro. I, mean, so, I think right now you're acting a little nah, bit. Nah, you're gonna have to get out of my face, bro. Sorry. Right now. What is good, YouTube family? It's a Boris Shot. We back again with the Black Anomaly Rising Channel. So I gotta talk to y'all about this crazy situation with all of these campuses that are basically having these encampments posted up by these wacko pro-Palestinian nut jobs. Okay. Now this whole story, like I had to do at least one story on this. The whole thing is just completely ridiculous because what these people are trying to do is hide uh, blatant anti-Semitism, acts of violence, uh, intimidation, vandalism, right? Like they're, they're hiding and masking that behind free speech and saying it's their constitutional right to protest. It's so freaking ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. You can't just do whatever you want and then call it a protest. <laughs> like that makes absolutely no sense. But that's what these losers are trying to do. First up here, I want you guys to see this ridiculously entitled lady, okay, who's basically trying to say that she uh, needs humanitarian aid. <laughs> like she basically puts herself along with everyone else in this situation and then demands humanitarian aid is absolutely absurd. Take a look. Why what should are the university be obligated to provide food to people who have taken over a building? Uh, well, for, first of all, we're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. But you mentioned that there was a request to, that food and water be brought in, unless I misunderstood. To allow it to be brought in. I mean, well, I guess it's ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation Columbia feels it has to its students. Um, do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation or get severely ill, even if they disagree with you? If the answer is no, then you should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? But they, they, have they water did problems? put themselves in that, very deliberately, in that situation and in that position. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying, we want to be revolutionaries, we want to take up this building, now would you please bring us food and water? Nobody's asking them to bring anything. Flashback. We're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. This is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? Every, we're, we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing they, in basic they humanitarian doing. aid. They're stopping the delivery of food? I, we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it but violently. they haven't stopped it yet. We, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't know to what extent it has been attempted, but we're looking for a commitment. This person has the audacity to act like, well, if you don't want me to die, then you'll do it. It's like, chick, you literally could leave at any time. You literally could leave and go do something else. Uh, all the people could, but this is a deliberate decision you made and you want other people to come in and save you and bring you aid and bring you more stuff so you could make your encampment larger. Like, bruh. These people are totally insane. I want to show y'all another clip where a guy is on campus. This is at UCLA, okay? This is like one of the biggest ones that they were like supposedly one of the biggest in campus, maybe the biggest encampment. I'm not exactly sure because according to my research, they said there's been upwards of 80 different encampments across the nation just this week, okay? Like freaking ridiculous. But let's go ahead and react to this video where these guys are trying to like remove this guy from the encampment just because he's trying to get to class. No problem, sir. You said you had a problem, you right? You do, you bro. I'm an African American. You are a white man telling me to leave a part of the campus. You want me to go to Jasmine Rush and show her a photo of you, the dean of students, and let her know that you was harassing me? Am I harassing? Yeah, you are. You're asking me to leave a public place. You're asking you as a white man are asking an African American student to leave a public area at UCLA campus. That's called racial discrimination, and that's a violation of the Civil Rights Act. So, do you do you want to get out of my face now? Your, your presence. Uh, on purpose. What's that? You're being an agitator. I mean, an agitator. So you think the First Amendment is agitation? 
No, no one. See, you're drawing lines that aren't there. Okay, because I'm, 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 pra I'm practicing the First Amendment right and you're to allowed record. To do that. Right. So I'm recording over here. This guy's recording me. You're not talking to him. Look, he's recording me. You're not. You're not. You're not talking to him. We got. We got people over here. You know what I'm saying? I don't see you talking to them. You're we just. Haven't any, we haven't had any complaints right. about so them being agitated. Right. Well, you're just so bothering me, bro. We you're haven't not, had any complaints okay. about them being agitated. I don't know if what. We get a complaint. What, we so what's it, what's an agitator? I don't playing? have to tell you that. Right. Exactly. You can't yeah. even explain yourself. Bro. I don't have to tell you that. You, you're you're trying. To you're two white right. men. You're two white men blocking an African American student from walking around on the campus. You're allowed to go wherever you want. Where Am I? I'm to allowed to go where I want. You still <laughs> be blocking my daughter's stroller from going forward. You just spilled my this drink. This dude, there. You just spilled my drink. You see, you're blocking, fake, you're, you see how fake these people are? Like, oh, yeah, you're allowed to go wherever you want, but not within the encampment. <laughs> right? Because he's literally blocking him. Like, they're being fake and they're being totally obtuse on purpose. Blocking my child's stroller from moving forward. That's a little weird, bro. You're acting a little weird, bro. I, mean, so, I think right now you're acting a little nah, bit weird. Nah, you're going to have to get out of my face, bro. Sorry. Right now, like you know, you're making. The yeah, you 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 sure are following me though. I mean, right now. You're following me. You're following me. You're sticking your hand in my face. You're putting your arms up over me. You're doing a lot of weird stuff, bro. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Why are you sorry? I don't know why you're sorry. We've expressed. I don't know why you're sorry, did, did, Like, did a dude just run away to get back up? Did y'all see that? Let me go back for a second. It looked like the guy who was just here like ran away. Yeah, this guy. I don't know why you're sorry, bro. What? We didn't express that you can stand on the outside. Buddy. You can stand on the outside of the Did they just say that he's going to get okay, in trouble? Or I can stand here too. By who? What, are, what y'all going to do? Yeah. You can stand on the outside of the Yeah. I can stand want. anywhere I want. Yeah. That's the good part about being a student. Bro, you know there's a 9% acceptance right here? So I had to work pretty hard. Yeah, I got into UCLA, 9% acceptance rate, so I can go where I want on this campus. Yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah, a, a student. I'm a, I'm a student at UCLA. My name is Milagro Jones. Who are you? How did you get in? I walked in. I'm a student at UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, believe, I can't believe the audacity of these people. How did he get in? Bro, he goes to the school. <laughs> They're like, how dare you? Like, come to our encampment. We know you paid thousands of dollars to go to this school, but how dare you infringe upon us who infringed upon your campus that you paid for? How dare you? You don't know what Royce Quad is part of UCLA? As a student, that's what we do. We walk around our school, bro. You didn't fly in here. Right. Did politely, I fly in here? We're politely asking you to step outside. And I'm politely outside. asking you to step outside. I'm a student here, are you? Do you work for UCLA? Because I know Jasmine Rush, the dean of students, would like to know why you're putting your hand in one of her students' faces. That's great. So we're gonna have to get you identified, buddy. For harassing an African American student at school. What is the school a little too integrated for you? <laughs> what you trying to segregate? You trying to resegregate the school or something? You know why we're here Look at these white liberals, bro. Look at these cosplayers. White liberals, <laughs> white libs, cosplaying as the oppressed, stopping no, an African American student from accessing the school. Nothing new. A bunch of words you don't Nothing new. Old as time. Oh, now I don't know if you if you guys caught that. He said you're using a bunch of words you don't even understand. Like, isn't it the classic story where some white person is trying to tell the black person? Uh, oh, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't. You clearly don't understand those words. I'm like, the dude is literally in school. <laughs> it may, he's there to learn. And if he didn't, if he happened to not understand, maybe he would if he get the hell off his campus. You ever thought about that? Story old this time. Nothing, nothing new. Here, nothing new. Nothing new. Yeah. So do y'all think y'all will catch the RICO Act when this is all said and done, or how you think it's gonna play out? Ooh. Explain to me what you think the RICO is. Uh, you guys are organized crime. Yeah, we're going to ask you to leave again, man. Yeah, you guys are uh, working together to commit a crime. What's the crime? So right now, you've <laughs> assaulted uh, multiple students. You've assaulted multiple community members, including myself. Which... Uh, do you have any evidence? Of yes, I do. It was, it was broadcast on CNN, Fox News, and it was broadcast on people over here. Everywhere. They're the ones who ran off and told y'all I was recording right there. These are the ones that ran off. Hey, get him, guys. He's recording at the campus. <laughs> oh, my God. He has a phone, and he's practicing his First Amendment rights. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bro, <laughs> okay, this dude is clearly trolling, okay, but... I found it to be hilarious. And that's the thing is, it's not just going to be as simple as the violence. I do think that if they, I do think absolutely they should charge these individuals, uh, the ones who did the violent acts. But in my opinion, anybody who's at this encampment who took place and actually setting it up, absolutely they should be 
suspended from the school, expelled from the school, even some jail time because I know if it was a college that I went to and I couldn't go to school because some nut jobs decided that they wanted to wave Palestine flags and set up an encampment just so they could feel important about themselves, right? It's feel like they're fighting for some big important issue. And yeah, I'd be freaking ticked off, okay? I know there has to be some sort of law involving a violation of uh, public property, private property, whatever it's considered. I know there has to be some sort of law. For example, you can't just go and set up an encampment in the middle of the street because technically the street is public property, right? So I'm sure that there's something that they could get these kiddos on that they absolutely should, especially considering the fact that they're blocking people from going to class. Then you could consider a potential intimidation charges, uh, even potential assault charges. Like you saw the guy had like the, his foot on the stroller, right? There's all kinds of stuff that they could get these folks on. So I really don't think that they thought this through in my opinion. I mean, they made a big fuss, but I don't think it's gonna go the way that they thought that it would. And you know whose fault that all of this is? This is the Biden administration. I feel like all of these pawns, I mean, that's basically what I consider all of these uh, free Palestine wackos is basically just a bunch of pawns uh, for other governments, right? Like everybody knows that the people who are the easiest to indoctrinate are the younger uh, people, right? Like they've have these people convinced that they're on the right side of history and that they're smarter than everybody else, neither of which is true. But essentially these people have become tools for any type of propaganda that revolves around feeling as though the victims are whoever the people of the color are and the white folks are the battle. And so since most of the Jewish people are white, they're like, oh yeah, these are clearly the bad guys, right? Like wh whatever the history may be, right? Like there's all kinds of history between the Jewish people and the Palestinian people and that history, whatever it was, has fallen apart and Hamas chose to attack them. Now, since Israel's fighting back in ways that these students don't agree with, now all of a sudden they feel like they want to say, wait a minute, uh, the attack, the terror attack was bad, but you can't fight back even harder. It's a tactical team that is absolutely dismantling. So they will dismantle it, they'll remove it. By the time sunup comes, it should be totally dismantled. Uh, those that were occupying will be taken into custody or if they want to leave the scene, uh, but as I uh, heard just a few minutes ago, many of the people that were inhabiting this camp were not students at UCLA. And we knew that there were activists that were there strictly to defy law, to defy the rule, and to establish this for a particular reason, which is what you'll find. Many of those are not students. Uh, they're just activists that were there for their particular purpose. As we see them carrying the way in the plastic cup, uh, we have a number of sheriff's buses. We have the processing. But when they amass hundreds and hundreds of officers for this particular purpose, uh, it, it is for a genuine purpose, not a bluff. A lot of people thought at uh, midnight, at 1 o'clock in the morning, it was a bluff. It wasn't a bluff. They were just waiting for the right time when they could do this with safety to the officers and safety to those that were housed inside this encampment, which was totally, completely illegal at UCLA. They wasn't going to continue. They weren't letting it continue for days and days and days. It came to that time. We're going to take it down and let's move. And they had all the resources there. The tactical teams moved in. So uh, law enforcement was well prepared. And what we see happening is the total dismantling. By the time sunup comes, uh, that encampment will be removed. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Dennis. Uh, stand by there. We appreciate uh, your, your help with this coverage. We're going to uh, go right back to Gigi Gracia, who's right there uh, at the front of uh, what's happening here. Gigi, what do you look? What are you seeing? Well, protesters just set off another fire extinguisher, uh, leaving the officers that are up close in a cloud of smoke from that fire extinguisher. Off to the left, you see them flashing their flashlights, continuing to focus their flashlights on the officers' eyes. I can tell you that can do some serious damage. And there's another table that's flying over the metal barriers. You can hear the protesters shouting boo. What they're doing, the protesters inside the encampment, and you can see them there, they're picking up pieces of wood and using that wood to shield themselves from officers. But officers continue to move in. Some of the protesters are throwing bottles, cans, 
guns, fire extinguishers after they set them off at the officers. We haven't seen any injuries yet, but obviously an extremely tense situation. And just moments ago, they used the loudspeaker once again and asked people, please leave, please leave. Just saying to do a blind ceasefire, no hostages freed or anything like that is not something that I would consider reasonable. And I would actually consider that a form of supporting Hamas. But this is all the fault of these woke leftists on the Biden administration, Joe Biden himself, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, and many more have literally been openly calling for ceasefire, calling it a genocide. You even got Chuck Schumer saying that uh, Netanyahu should, we should have new elections because Netanyahu's wrong. If you want to know what an unfolding genocide looks like, open your eyes. It looks like the forced famine of 1.1 million innocents. It looks like thousands of children eating grass as their bodies consume themselves while trucks of food are slowed and halted just miles away. It looks like good and decent people who do nothing. I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous. I'm what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. Five months into this conflict, it is clear that Israelis need to take stock of the situation and ask, must we change course? At this critical juncture, I believe a new election is the only way to allow for a healthy and open decision-making process about the future of Israel. These same folks are denouncing the police being leveraged as part of stopping these crazy encampments and stopping all this ridiculous violence. They're trying to act like these were nonviolent protests. I'm like, these people are literally making me sick. Here's one example. So Columbia University out in New York, New York Mayor Eric Adams, who I've made videos about on this channel, you should check him out. He had to break up an encampment there. Well, it was a combination of folks uh, protesting outside as well as actually occupying the freaking campus, one of the campus buildings, okay? And when he said he was gonna use law enforcement to remove these students from this building that they were in unlawfully, then Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez spoke out directly against this. So look what she says here. If any kid is hurt tonight, responsibility will fall on the mayor and university president. Other leaders in schools have found a safe de-escalatory path. This is the opposite of leadership and endangers public safety, a nightmare in the making. I urge the mayor to reverse course. Okay, so this is what AOC is saying. She's basically saying that getting the police involved is dangerous. Now, why is getting the police involved inherently dangerous? It shouldn't be presuming that these people don't freak out and attack the police, which a lot of people obviously did. I mean, you, you've, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the videos prior to this one where people have done this, then there's really no problem. And they literally didn't even bring uh, any live ammunitions to any of these, uh, any of these types of situations. Okay. They brought a bunch of like rubber bullets and smoke bombs and stuff like that. Okay, so was there some violence that people could hit each other with batons and, and flags and all kinds of other stuff and pepper spray? Yes, but guess who was doing the majority of that? The protesters, not the police. Okay, so to, when people try to act like, oh, uh, the police are going to cause like this, this extremely violent circumstance, now we're in the aftermath. There's hardly been anyone injured in this entire situation. There's a couple protesters have been injured, probably injuring themselves trying to fight the police. Okay, but you got people like AOC who basically just wants them to not do anything, even though they gave all these students all kinds of warnings about what would happen if they didn't comply. Moments ago, they used the loudspeaker once again and asked people, please leave, please leave peacefully. You are risking arrest. Somebody just opened up a giant pool umbrella right there, that beige. It looks like an umbrella or a tent. They just, they're using it to shield themselves as officers continue to move in. They've also got those metal barricades. Okay, we're asking, being asked to, okay, they're asking us to move just a little bit. Uh, farther back because the officers are throwing those pieces of wood and the tables as they continue to dismantle the encampment. And Guys, this whole situation is a mess. The radical left, the tyrannical left, 
they created a monster okay and it's really time to take old yeller out back because this is the monster of your creation and sometimes you got to deal with the monster that you create and if you can't then you're going to have to get somebody in there who can this is why we need trump so that people in situations like this will not occur like this happened across the nation they worried about j6 you got nationwide campuses being shut down including several here in my state of georgia okay this is definitely not a good situation and these people should be ashamed of themselves for still uh calling all of this stuff a genocide uh having anti-zionist views anti-israel views anti-semitic views right calling out netanyahu right they're amping the flame they're fanning the flames that's causing all of this unrest in america and still not having people with any sort of patriotism with any sort of care for anything that's actually happening here instead they're too busy caring about everything else including a bunch of people who don't even go to the schools imagine somebody who don't even go to the schools coming in and shutting the school down saying hey we're gonna form an encampment here and anybody who tries to walk to class we're gonna prevent them from coming into our safe space it's like bro the campus is somebody else's space you can't just come in somebody else's space and then block them from coming into their own space imagine somebody coming to your house like hey this is this is our house we're protesting in your house so you can't come in here like bro you better get the hell up out of here before i beat you up anyway drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new i appreciate y'all watching the black anomaly rising channel i'm out hey get him guys he's recording at the campus oh my god he has a phone and he's practicing his first amendment rights <laughs>